Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Sunday Night at the Organ, but welcome to Sunday Night at the Movies. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, we are having a silent film accompaniment extravaganza. Tonight, no less than two films from the legendary Buster Keaton. Who knows Buster Keaton's real name? Hmm. Let's see if you can remember that. And tonight I've chosen two films, two shorter films. They're both round about the sort of 20 to 25 minute mark each. And we will, as we just did, proceed uh, with some music. So I just started playing a piece of music from the same time as these films, from the early 20s. So Fats Waller's A Handful of Keys. Would that have been played in a cinema around this time? I dare say it would have been, maybe even by the grand maestro himself. Fats Waller actually did accompany silent films on an organ in a cinema. I bet you didn't know that. Um, so here we are, day three of our organ festival, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and tonight is well, very different. For a start, I only have a monitor here. I do not have any chat. Usually I have my chat on an iPad here so I can see what you're up to. But tonight it's Vanessa only. Vanessa is sitting there chatting away, getting everything ready. Now, Vanessa does not have a monitor tonight. Normally, this is what our monitor looks like here. Yeah, And Vanessa can keep an eye on everything. So this is our um, ATEM mini screen, all the different inputs and things going on. Here's our film input that's about to go. I beg your pardon? Keine Ahnung, das, ja, das weiß ich auch nicht. Das habe ich auch erst gesehen. Wo ist das? Ähm, ich, ich, wenn ich am iPad gucke, sehe ich das auch. Ich weiß aber nicht, was das ist. Ich sehe das nicht. Du siehst es nicht. Das ist einfach die Liebe, die auf uns dann zukommt. Ne? Vanessa is saying, someone's asking questions about a heart in the live chat. We have no idea. That just, that ja, just appears. We, um, I, I see it when I'm watching it on an iPad, so I have no idea what it is. If anyone knows what it is, please do tell us, because we have no idea. So anyway, this is normally what we see, and this is the... This is the wonderful world of ATEM Mini working here. Let me put you into the secret. Now, tonight we only have the main camera. We're not using any of the other cameras tonight because it's just me playing the organ and you watching a film. You don't need to pay attention to what I'm doing. I'm only, I'm only there to accompany. Yes, of course the microphone's on. Why? Yes, the microphone is on. Yes, it's on. It's on, doing its thing. Can't you hear me, everybody? It's on and it's running and it's working. Is it not working? Are people saying it's not on? No, oh, okay. Microphone's definitely on here. Okay, and um, here we have the audio settings. There we have the recording. I'm not recording tonight. Um, on air, those are the very important ones. Are we sending a signal to the world? And then we have our various graphics that we can use and blah, 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 things like that. But tonight, ping, I'm only going to be watching the main screen. I get to see what you see tonight because I have to keep an eye on the film as it's happening here so you can see my hands moving here and live on the screen there and I have an infinity effect look look it's going off to infinity exciting um, really rather cool so I will be watching the film live here and accompanying live on the organ now the first film we're going to feature is Buster Keaton's The Haunted House um, which sounds like a sort of a horror film it's not um, and it's not actually scary in this day and age. I imagine back in the 1920s when this film came out, with its special effects, Buster Keaton was one of the first to have special effects in his films. Very, very sophisticated stuff for its day. Watch out for some of the amazing special effects in the film. Um, it's not terribly scary, but imagine going to the cinema in the 20s and seeing things like this. It must have been pretty impressive, let's put it like that. And of course, some live accompaniment from whatever musicians or musician was there at the time. That's the first film this evening. So, ladies and gentlemen, do you have something to eat? Do you have something to drink? Do you have someone or something to cuddle? We're about to head off into cinema land and enjoy a film together. Are you ready? Are we ready? Mrs. Garchaw, are we ready? Mrs. Gartrell, what are you doing in the background? She's writing emails. Who are you writing to? Uh, it's Ingo e, I see. Oh, are we allowed to say that name? I just told you. Oh, you just told everybody then. Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let me get the organ ready for, for what we're about to do. Here we go. Now, the first film is going to be accompanied on the organ of Duren. That's the one with the big. 
the big Shamad pipes. And this is the first time I've done this on a classical organ, on a church organ. Now, the second film will be accompanied, obviously, with a cinema organ, so it will sound much more authentic. But in this day and age, you will find a lot of silent films being performed in churches. I beg your pardon? Only my microphone. But your microphone? Vanessa doesn't want to wear a microphone. She will soon. Don't worry, I'll pin it on her one of these days and we'll get it going. Ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to sit back and relax and get ready for the haunted house. Are we ready? <laughs>
the end of number one, the haunted house. The haunted house. Now, when you're accompanying a film like that, it's obvious that you have to have sort of, you have happy moments, you have sad moments. So you have, you have your sort of major stuff for the happy stuff. And then you have the sort of the minor and diminished stuff <laughs> for the scary stuff and that kind of thing. And then you have your special effects falling down climbing up and all that kind of thing. It's much easier on a theatre organ, believe it or not, because you have percussions and things to do there as well. But things like knocking on doors, you can do that, or a whistle. You can do all those kinds of things with any kind of organ. And um, the idea is to try to keep them in. Or try and get them in, sorry. That's more important, isn't it? Yes. Try to get them in. So here we are. That was feature number one. Now this would be the point in proceedings. Usually when you would go to the cinema in those days, there wouldn't just be that one film. That would be one of the films you would see that evening. There would be a short feature, there might be a main feature, there might be three separate features, one never knows. There could be any number of films. Um, and in between those films, there would have been musical entertainment, provided probably by the organist in question. Now that organist in question would probably have been sitting at a theatre organ, he said very quickly, loading a theatre organ into the system, which should take a couple of minutes. Click, click. It should only take a couple of seconds, actually. There it goes. Look at that. My goodness me. The wonders of modern technology. And um, in here, I think I have a set of registrations for films. Yes, there we are. And I beg your pardon? Exactly. And this is, the, as Vanessa just said, this is the time of the evening where people then sort of get up out of their seats, you know, um, take care of the, take care of things that nature tells them to take care of, but they also go and grab themselves some popcorn and other bits and pieces that they might need. Something to drink, something to eat, have a chat, have a smoke. All, all of those things that used to be allowed in cinemas and no longer are. And during that time, the organist would have been playing some music for those people. What might the organist have been playing? I don't know. Let's find out.
something as simple as that. A tune that the organist may have played during the film to remind people. Hits of the day, for example. That was the black bottom, by the way. Did you get my joke when the guys had the bottoms glued together? I played the black bottom. I also played... <laughs> We're in the money. Now that, of course, was not a piece of music from that early on. So I was cheating. I was time traveling for that one. But those are the fun things you could do. Those are the fun things you could do during those, um, during those times. Now, obviously, in an evening of entertainment like this, people would have queued outside for hours. Well, definitely a long time. Um, Movie palaces of old, even in smaller cinemas, were the largest buildings in town. They were as big as the local churches, if not actually bigger. And the, the bigger ones became known, of course, as movie palaces. And the movie palaces were wonderful places of, well, basically, palaces of entertainment. You didn't just go out for the movie. There would have been a live act on stage. The organist would have played some tunes in between the acts and things like that. And, uh, you know, it was an, an evening's entertainment. You went out for the evening. There would have been a restaurant or a cafe or something similar where you could have actually sat down and had a proper meal at some point. I mean, hard to believe in this day and age. Yeah, you go to the cinema now, you buy your ticket for however much you then spend at least, at least the same again on a bucket of popcorn and an even bigger bucket of fizzy drink to um, basically fuel your diabetes uh, but in those days it was a much healthier environment you would go out and actually have a proper evening out with all the thrills with all the spills with all the frills involved in such an evening and it would have been great fun sad that those days are over but we can kind of recreate them ourselves so before you came here this evening you were all in the chat that was you being in the queue of course and then as you came in you you obviously passed the box office on the way and you all chipped in and got a ticket, didn't you, ladies and gentlemen? Vanessa, do we have the ticket banner up so that people can see? We have it on the poster there now. You posted it, but is it on the screen for people to see? Is it on the screen? Is it on the screen? Yes, of course you can. Yes, number two. Number two. No, 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 that's number two. So, that's my screen. Yes, that's. Have you said Oh, dear Lord, dear Lord. Mrs. Gaunt, that's our marketing manager, ladies and gentlemen. I built that up beautifully for everybody so that, they, you know, so everyone, you know, they would be sort of psychologically fooled into buying a ticket on the way past. And what did Vanessa do? Oh, cocked it up. I see. <laughs> uh, oh, there we are, you see, there we are. That's it, you see. Thank you for your... Was that up during the film? It wasn't, was it? Was that up? No. No? <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, my managing director is definitely not my marketing manager. <laughs> so anyway, there we are. So yes, you would have passed the box office where you would have parted with some cash in order to receive a ticket, an actual physical paper ticket, which would, by an usher or usherette in those days, been clipped or torn or whatever they did with it, and you would have been allowed into the Palace of Wonders, where you would have been entertained all night. Let's continue the musical entertainment before we start film number two. What might you have heard? You might have heard the Black Bottom Stomp. You might have heard, of course, tunes of the day. A favorite of the day would have been something by Irving Berlin or perhaps George Gershwin or Cole Porter or someone along those lines. Tonight, we're going to feature a piece of music by Mr. Irving Berlin. And this is something we were, I mentioned it very briefly last night in our romantic evening. Um, whom we were posting or uh, playing around with romantic numbers by Irving Berlin when he was a very young man. And I mentioned a few bars of this one, one of his first and most famous compositions, Alexander's Ragtime Band. <laughs>
gemacht, aber in dem Film nicht benutzt und ich habe den noch nicht eingespielt. <lacht> <lacht> so, oh mein, ich habe so gedacht, stopp, stopp, stopp. I beg your pardon, the microphone is on. Also. You, Vanessa, did you hear that? She said a naughty word in German on the way past. Hold on, I must turn the microphone off and cover my mouth so you cannot see what I said. <laughs> Vanessa just went into a little panic. because She's got nothing much to do tonight in the switchy front. So here's me playing away on a piece of music. She thought, oh God, I've got to do something. I've got to press buttons. Yeah, but I see it already. That's already... Yeah, but it's a little bit like that. No, that's and I think that's going on. Oh, I see. Ah. It would be good if she had a microphone, because then you would have heard her naughty word. <gasps> that would have been exciting. That's from here. Yes, she got that from me. That's true, actually. And then? <laughs> oh, I see. She said, if my mum could hear her now. Yes, obviously, yes. Yes, I learnt words like that from my dad, and I passed them on to Vanessa, obviously. So there you go. She was <laughs> Apparently she was very well behaved before she met me. Yes, I'm sure she was. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's time then. Have you, have you had something to eat? Have you been out for a quick pee and come back in and you're ready for number two, real number two? Um, now, I deliberately chose a second Buster Keaton film for tonight. Um, well, for several reasons, but the main one is just because they're great. They're absolutely wonderful. Um, Buster Keaton was definitely one of the best best filmmakers of his time. And um, it, in my opinion, this is only my opinion, of course, but in my opinion, far superior to Charlie Chaplin. Um, Charlie Chaplin's films were, were very good and, um, you know, and very, um, uh, very of their time, but they, they haven't aged very well, let's put it like that. But the Buster Keaton films, they're still as popular and still as funny and still as clever as they were back when they were made. And of course, all of these films, they all have a sort of a, a, sort of a common theme. And uh, Buster Keaton, a bit like Charlie Chaplin, it's that sort of that poor lost soul thing going on. Yeah? So people in the audience could almost relate to, oh, God, the poor guy. But in the end, he always gets the girl. Or does he? Um, usually he does. And it always works out well in the end. But of course, all the things that can happen to him along the way. And um, you saw in the first film there, The Haunted House, the sheer amount of sort of physical stunts that Buster Keaton put himself through. Now, um, it's well documented that in making his films, he was uh, regularly injured, sometimes quite badly, yeah? And he never let it show during filming. For example, one of the films we showed, um, was it the last time? Was it The General, the first one? Or was it the other one that we showed, Sherlock Jr.? No, it must have been The General, the first one we showed, uh, where he was playing around with the train, remember? The general was the train, and uh, he got caught under the sort of water spout, um, you know, um, feeding water into the steam train. And uh, they underestimated the power of that water, and that threw him to the ground. He broke several ribs and cracked a shoulder. And at the end of that scene, he got up and ran away with broken ribs, broken shoulder, and all that kind of thing. You know, and then uh, filming was was halted for months while he had to recover. And these things happened regularly during the filming of these movies back in the day. And if you watch the next one, uh, the next one is The Goat, which again is one of these uh, poor, hard up uh, guys, mistaken, a case of mistaken identity, I think is the best way of putting this one. The Goat, uh, you know, always the sort of the victim. Um, but if you watch some of the stunts he performs, uh, you know, it's quite amazing what he put himself through. But in this one, very careful in this one, or very important in this one, watch out for the special effects and the special filming techniques that Buster Keaton employs to get the maximum effect from his uh, cinematic knowledge. Let's put it like that. Um, it's absolutely wonderful. There's one, all I'm going to say is there's one scene involving a train coming towards us. And the planning of that scene took months. The cinematography of that scene took a long time to do, and then... Um, then getting the, 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 um, the film developed and cut and spliced and put in, in the right order, etc., etc. It was an incredibly complicated thing to do back then. But Buster Keaton knew how it was going to work. He'd thought it through in his mind, told his producers, his cinematographers, his directors exactly how it should work, and it worked an absolute treat. And people, when they went to the cinema and saw this, were absolutely amazed. Nowadays, of course, you can just press a button and it all happens digitally. But back in those days, there was a lot of thinking that had to go on. 
And the kinds of special effects you see in these old silent movies, especially the Buster Keaton ones, and to a certain extent the Harold Lloyd films that came slightly later, um, they paved the way for special effects in films to come. Right, enough chat from me. Ladies and gentlemen, take your seats, please, for a reel number two, a Buster Keaton's uh, The Goat. Are we ready, Mrs. G? Okay. Are we ready? She's not ready. She's faffing about in the background. Are you ready? That's definitely the right one. Are you ready? Ladies and gentlemen, take your seats and get ready for Buster Keaton's The Goat. <laughs>
That was, ladies and gentlemen, the goat, one of Buster Keaton's best and special effect fool um, compositions. I think that's an absolutely wonderful old film. And consider when it was made, you know, the 20s, the 1920s, 100 years ago, that film was made. And let's face it, you know, the special effects, especially that train thing I told you about when the train came towards us. And then at the end with the elevator flying out of the roof, you know, amazing special effects. One of the first films ever made with such special effects. Um, and that's the genius of Mr. Buster Keaton. Did anyone tell us what Buster Keaton's real name was? Did anyone get that in the chat? Vanessa wasn't watching. <laughs> Vanessa wasn't watching. So, ladies and gentlemen, there we are. That was our main feature, or those were our main features. All that remains now is for a little bit of music for you. So, let's... Let's play some, let's play some music from the legendary Mr. Duke Ellington. Remember him? We love Duke Ellington. And here's one of his ones, again, connected to the early days. This is one of the earliest Duke Ellington compositions there is. It's a rather wonderful one. It could actually have been used for silent film accompaniment itself. The East St. Louis, Toulouse. Thank you. 
we're into a habit here in these uh, live streams where when I come towards the end of a tune, I always quickly say fertig, which means it was the German for finished. And um, <clears throat> normally Vanessa gets ready to press buttons and do things, but obviously there's no buttons to press today. We have one camera angle tonight, and that's it. Exciting stuff. So, ladies and gentlemen, what did you think of the silent films this evening? Did you have a good time? What was the chat like this evening, Mrs. G? Voice, Everyone was quiet. That's good. That's a good sign. That means you were watching the film and hopefully enjoy yourselves. Did everyone enjoy themselves? If you did, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. If you've given us a thumbs up, put a plus one in the chat so that we know you've given us a thumbs up. That lets YouTube know you had a good time. And if you didn't have a good time for any reason, then put a plus one in there anyway and a thumbs up because it just lets YouTube know that we need to put out better content. That was psychologically good, wasn't it? What do you think? What do you think? Vanessa, how's the chat this evening? How's everyone doing in the chat this evening? I haven't had a chance to have any... Everyone's happy. That's good tonight. So who's there tonight? Tell me who's there. Let's say hi to a few people. Yeah. Lots. All right. For example. Uh, Bodenseehorn Boden is there. Hello, Bodenseehorn. Also who else is there? That's not just Bodenseehorn. Joe, Joe Green is there tonight. We know who Joe Green really Alexander. is. Alexander. Hello, Dominic. Alexander. Hello, Dominic. Daniel has Alexander. I beg your pardon? Daniel is there. Hello, <laughs> Daniel. We say glad Daniel. Daniel's okay because as long as we don't know who it's connected to. Ooh. Yeah, Herbert, hello Herbert. Hammond Orgel kommt bald für Herbert, versprochen. Ja, wer noch? Am I allowed to say that? All right, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this is the Gauchor Gang live, okay? It's, I, I think it's amazing how personal the Gauchor Gang has become. Our friend Gleiswanderer has just informed everyone that he was washing his trousers this yeah. evening. <sighs> Thank you for that information. There you are, good. Stefan is there. Cam, of course, Cam and Kristen. CEO, CFO, CTO. Everyone's there, okay, good. That's it. Oh, there must be more people there that, that we haven't mentioned. Not everyone. Not everyone. Mike, hello, Mike. Elvis Presley is there. Oh, hello, Elvis. Nice of you to be here. Alex is there. Nancy, of course. Ooh, Nancy has friends this evening. Party time. Richard and Hannah Laura. That's nice. Good for you. Dr. Charles is there. Dr. Charles is there. And here we go. See now, if we start missing people out now, they're going to be we're we're going to upset people now. Hello, Philip. Hello, Alexander again. <laughs> is Steffi there as well? Hello, Steffi. If Steffi's there. Yes, I did see that. Yes, but that will come on Wednesday. Steffi hat uns was geschickt. Das kommt am Mittwoch. Oder vielleicht Dienstag, ich weiß noch nicht. We have Gartshaw Gang kittens. Yeah. Do we have a picture to show? Yeah. Have you put it, have you, oh, Vanessa told us about this, but do we have a picture to put in the live stream to show everyone? All right, well, we'll do that in a minute. I didn't tidy anything away. No, it's automatic, exactly. To help the director recently, I set up... Oh, oh God, don't say that, don't say that. You know what it's like when it, men, men, married men will understand this. To make Vanessa's life easier, I recently set something up in our mail app on the computer there. So that when mails come from our regular guests, they automatically get put into folders so that we know where they are, yeah? so you can find them easily. Apparently, that was not the right thing to do. It's much easier, apparently, to search through hundreds of mails to find the particular one you're looking for. Have we got the cat picture? Mm -hmm. You can put it anywhere, but just put it into put it into one of the slots first. Yeah, eben, das geht nicht. Muss es in einer der Dings machen? Aber, ja, genau. And then comes, uh, you put it in number one, and then you can put number one on. Ladies and gentlemen, our friend Bodenseehorn. Remember recently during a concert, his cat gave birth to kittens. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here, here is a picture of those kittens. How many kittens? Here's a, pic a picture, uh, vier in photo? Okay, wie viele sind auf dem photo? Okay, here's the picture of some cats. Three, two, one, clicky. Oh my goodness, look at that. That's a baby kitten. 
Isn't mean, that cute? That's it. The Gancho Gang has officially become a cat channel. That's it. We've officially become a cat channel, showing everyone pictures of kittens. I've, how many people in the audience just went, oh. Now, Vanessa is not a cat woman, but even Vanessa said she would love one of those cats. <gasps> no, she wouldn't love one of those cats. Bonzehorn, we do not want one of those cats. <laughs> but she would, love, she would love to cuddle one of those cats, yeah? Okay, Vanessa's fallen in love with one of the cats. That's dangerous. That's very dangerous indeed. Okay, anything else exciting in the news tonight? Anything else exciting in the news tonight? No. <laughs> Apart from the cute cat. Oh, that's it. She's, that's it. I've, I've lost her now anyway. She's off with the cats. So, how about a gentle piece of music from the days of, uh, the days of organ music? How about this? This is one we haven't had for a long time, and it's something I've been wanting to play for a long time. It's been a request for quite a time. It's a lovely old piece of music called...
The Sentimental Journey. A lovely old big band number that hardly gets played these days. I think it's a terrible shame. I think that really is a terrible shame. Now, last night we had our lovey-dovey night, remember? A night of romance. And there was a lot of numbers we didn't get round to playing. <laughs> a rather sincere amount of numbers we didn't get round to playing. And one of them I didn't play, I didn't get round to playing, was, of course... <laughs> Good heavens, where did that come from? was requested by our friend Uncle Joe. Um, actually, requested by quite a lot of people. And it's a great old tune that we really should have included at the beginning. And it's called, I Can't Give You Anything But Lunch. Uh, love, sorry. can't give you anything oh, but a love. A wonderful old tune. How about... Oh, I'm in the mood now. I'm in the mood now. I'm in the mood now for... Okay, I've said it three times. Let's see if she can work it out. Hmm, I'm in the mood now for... I think I'm in the mood for... I'm in the mood for... Ukulele. This is... the. the Vanessa doesn't know the old tunes at all. I'm in the mood for a piece of music called In the Mood. Heavens above. Ladies and gentlemen, let's, let's, let's dedicate this one to our chief technical officer, Mr. Cameron Platts, who is also one of our blue wrenches at the moment, keeping an eye on things and making sure that the world is in order. Thank you, Cam. And In the Mood is, I know Cam's a massive fan of Mr. Glenn Miller, and who isn't? So let's have an original version of In the Mood. It started out life as a ragtime number. Did you know that? And then it turned into a jump jive number, and then it became the um, Glenn Miller classic. 
in the mood, in the key of, what key shall we play it in? B flat. <laughs> actually started out left. The original melody was ever so slightly different. It did do sort of ba ba bee ba ba bim. It did a whole sort of arpeggio thing. Very strange. And over the years that sort of simplified itself and stuck to do do Didn't do that either. Ah, wonderful stuff. Oh. Right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to finish early tonight. Last night, my goodness me, last night we went for two hours and 45 minutes. Oh, that was a long one last night, and by the time we tidied everything up, by the time we went out for a walk with the dog, when did we go to bed? It was about three o'clock in the morning when we finally got to bed, oh, the two of us. So a very late night indeed, and we've had a busy day today. So, after our film night, if you don't mind, we're going to finish a little earlier tonight. How, how late is it? Okay, it's almost 10 to midnight here in this part of the world. I think that's good going for a Sunday night, don't you? Um, so, yes, so I think what we'll do is we'll finish with a list, little, sort of gentle little number now, and then, of course, we will have our bye-bye our blues at the end. Um, oh, yes, remember last night we did our lovey-dovey night, and I said, I wonder how many copyright claims we would have. I was pleasantly surprised. My bet was 21, or was it 22? I can't remember. You, Vanessa said? Well, she said 21, right? Uh, so I, no, then I said 18 in that case. And other people said various things. We actually only had seven 
which was um, rather amazing. I didn't expect that to happen. I thought it would have been pretty much everything we played last night. Funnily enough, well, actually, that's not true. Eight came in, but one of them was a false one. One of them was a copyright claim on Daisy, Daisy, la 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 ba -dum, which is definitely public domain and always has been for ages and ages and ages. So I, of course, disputed that. They're not getting that one. Um, but the rest of them were absolutely fine. No problem at all. Uh, so, yes, that was a very pleasant surprise indeed. It doesn't matter, though. Even if you only get one copyright claim, it means you get zip from YouTube. So that's, uh, that's the way those things work, which is a terrible shame. But hey, we're not just in this for the money. Yeah, we're in the money. Yes, if we were. Yes, well, anyway, never mind. Enough of that. Ladies and gentlemen, here's a beautiful melodic number in the key of D flat major. <gasps>
Body and Soul, a wonderful melody, a bit of the old Errol Garner style there, a tiny bit. That sort of lovely plodding rhythm with freestyle right hand on top there. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to finish up there for tonight. I do hope you've enjoyed our Sunday night is Silent Film Organ Music Night. God, that's quite a title, isn't it? And I uh, hope you enjoyed the silent film accompaniments with the bits and pieces around about it. And we'll be back for tomorrow night. Now, tomorrow night is going to be our night at the Oscars in tune with Oscar night over in Hollywood land. And we're going to be featuring music, obviously, from the films and music from the Oscar winning films throughout the ages. Should you have any requests for tomorrow night, spontaneous requests, get them in as quickly as possible and we will see if we can get them in. Those spontaneous requests should, of course, be for Oscar winning film music, if possible. You know where to send them, gang at garchor.de. That everybody knows that, but there might be new people there who don't know it yet. Our email is gang at gartshaw.de, de for Germany, Deutschland, and Vanessa put it in the chat there for everyone. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for being here tonight. Thank you for your cinema tickets along the way. Um, did, did we sell many tickets on the way past today? A few, said Vanessa. Well, a few is better than... There weren't that... How many people were there tonight in the chat? Okay, ooh, that's not too many tonight. Yeah, I don't know. Sunday night when we do film night, it doesn't seem to be popular, but it's a very specialized thing. So thank you for being part of our specialized audience this evening for our silent film night. Your attendance was very gratefully received. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. See you tomorrow night for some film music. Until then, it's bye-bye.